So you want to win a culture victory in Civ 6, but it seems too complex. Well fear not, today I'm going to show you how to win culture with arguably the strongest Civ for this victory type since release, Peter of Russia. This strategy is going to work on every difficulty and every game speed, but I'm going to be playing on Emperor with quick speed, because I'm impatient. Turn 1, after loading into a game, one of our abilities comes into play right away. We got more tiles, but more importantly, we get faith and production from Tundra. This is great, because A. You don't need God King in order to get a Pantheon, and B. All of this terrain that is usually unusable by other nations. It's free real estate. Your build order is entirely up to you, but I personally like two scouts and a settler, followed by a district of your choice and a monument. Thanks to the ability I just mentioned, you will probably be the first one to get a Pantheon. Do not pick religious settlements. I know it's tempting, but pick Dance of the Aurora. Just trust me on this one, you'll see why soon. Your first tech should be Astrology. Religion is nice for culture, and it's absolutely required for the strategy I'm gonna show you. Russia also gets a unique holy site that is absolutely overpowered, so slap down that lava as soon as possible. It's about time we meet our AI neighbors. Try to be nice to them, because if you're playing on something higher than king, they're gonna kick your ass in the early game. And to win with tourism, it is generally recommended to have good relations with others. So be a good boy and don't forget to send those delegations. After we get your great profit, it's time to put our pantheon bonus to good use. Religion can give some really powerful bonuses, two of the most popular being Feed the World and Choral Music. However, thanks to literally living in Siberia, we get a minimum of plus 6 fey from every holy site, so the only reasonable choice is to pick Work Ethic, which essentially turns our lavras into industrial zones. Soon after this, you should be getting Theology and the Scripture card, which doubles the adjacency bonus of our holy sites, literally tripling our production. The remaining beliefs are all up to you, just pick whatever sounds nice, I guess. Now that's all great, but we still have really bad culture and tourism. That's where wonders come in. Wonders, apart from the unique bonuses, which are really good on their own, also provide tourism and adjacency bonuses for theater squares, fixing both issues. Now the drawback to all that is that they take a lot of production to build, and also if you're playing on higher difficulties, the AI will literally just speedrun all of them. That's why we chose work ethic. Plus 12 production in every city makes us produce stuff just as quickly as the AI does. That includes wonders. Nice. Thanks to that I managed to get the Oracle, the Temple of Artemis, and the Apadana because I felt like it. I'm not gonna mention every wonder we've built, cause the video would take 5 hours if I did, so I only point out the most impactful ones. All of that wonder building and religion founding should probably earn you a golden age. And with this much faith banked up, it's time to put it to good use with monumentality, which allows you to purchase settlers, builders, and traders with faith meaning we don't even have to build them in our cities. Small issue though, after you build or purchase a settler from a city, it loses one population. So in order to counteract this, we appointed Magnus and gave him the provision promotion. Now every settler purchase in our capital doesn't drain population. This combo contributed to probably the fastest expansion rate achievable. In one era, we went from this to this. And since you can get a monumentalic golden age up until the Renaissance era, there is no reason not to keep settling. As we are in the process of expanding, we still have to deal with our low yields. Well, Russia has a tool for that too, because of course they do. Grand Embassy gives us extra science and culture from trade routes if the nation we're trading with is stronger technologically, which is pretty much everyone we have met so far. You stupid. I didn't make much use of that ability since I needed to trade internally to keep growing, but just in case you weren't convinced Russia was overpowered, here you go. They literally have the tool for every situation. So another way to boost our yields are city-states. Take Nanmadol for example. For each district place on the coastline, they grant us plus two culture, which doesn't sound like much until a bit later in the era, where this will literally double our culture per turn. Now it's finally time to get more tourism, and that's where great people come in. Specifically, great writers, artists, and musicians. Each of them can produce from two to three great works of their respective type, which then can be placed at theater squares in amphitheaters, art museums, and broadcast centers respectively. Some wonders can also store great works, so it might be worth building them just for that. And because Lavras are perfectly balanced, they also generate great people points. So yeah, good luck getting any great works or Peter is in your game. Another way to attract tourists is through tile improvements. Some of them are provided to you with technologies, some are nation-specific, and some are granted by suzerainship of city-states like Laventa. And last but not least for now, national parks. Which seem complicated, but basically, if you have four charming or breathtaking tiles in a diamond shape with no tile improvements or districts on top of them, then you can purchase a naturalist to set one up. 
Personally, to make this easier, I just buy one to see if and where can I put them. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I've been building a lot of wonders. Most of them are here just because I got nothing better to do in my cities, since making units would just waste gold on maintenance. However, there are two wonders worth mentioning. St. Basil's Cathedral, because that's one more city that can grow on its own from now on, and Kilwaki and Kilwakisawani, giving us a 15% boost to our culture and faith because of suzerainship over two cultural and two religious city-states. Now we can fast forward a bit, because we kinda just keep doing what we were doing before. Expanding, building wonders and districts, getting great works, and after discovering Cold War, the game is as good as over. Why? Well, we just unlocked the rock bands. Rock bands are the most overpowered unit for culture, and also the most annoying RNG in the game. They cost faith to purchase, which is exactly why we are saving up all this time, and the way they work is that you can travel to other civilizations and perform concerts at their districts and wonders, which will provide a burst of tourism towards that civilization. The reason I and many other players hate them is that they have a random chance to disband after a concert, throwing all of that precious faith you spent on them down the drain. That's why faith is so important in tourism games. Because of our faith gain, we can just keep sending rock bands over and over again to offset the RNG mechanics. So after a couple more turns of sweet guitar riffs and some more RNG bullshit, bam, culture victory is ours. You can win the game just as quickly with any other Civ geared towards culture, just make sure to alter this strategy based on who you're playing as. And that's gonna be it. Hopefully after this video you'll have a general idea on what to do when going for culture. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.